Hi there, welcome back to the JUnit tutorial. This is a video 2. In this video, let's look at a uh, few more JUnit methods and uh, let's get started. In the previous video, we wrote JUnit for this particular method, truncate A in first two positions. Now, let's look at how to write JUnits for this particular method. Uh, this method is actually our first and last two characters the same. So, it basically looks at the first two characters of the string and the last two characters of the string and just returns back true or false based on whether they are same or not. So, if I just pass in one character, obviously it returns me false. Uh, AB, the first two characters and the last two characters are AB, so it returns true back. And ABC, that is basically uh, AB and BC, that's not true, so that's false. AAA, first two characters are AA, last two are AA also, so it's true. So, that's basically what we are going to test. So, we, let's go ahead and write a test for it quickly. Uh, as usual, a test is how you write, indicate to JUnit that that's a test method. And I'm going to write a test for this particular method, which is our first and last two characters the same. So, let's go ahead and put that in. A should be caps. So, let's go ahead and get ready. So, now string helper helper is equal to new string helper. There is a bit of duplication in here that we are doing but let us avoid it later. Uh, the next method assert method that we are going to look at is assert true. Assert true with true would succeed. I mean assert true with true means a green bar. If I assert true with a false value you get a red bar. So, assert true just checks whether the value which is passed to that method is true or false. Uh, if it's true, it succeeds. If it's false, then the JNIT test fails. Similarly, the opposite of that is asset false. Asset false succeeds if the value passed to it is false. If it's anything other, if it's true, obviously the only other thing other, other than true, sorry, other than false is true, is the test fails. So, that's what the asset true and the asset false method help uh, sorry I said true and the asset false method do and when I call the helper dot our first and last two characters the same I get a true or false back that's why I use the asset false or the asset true method so if I pass in an empty string I should get asset false so and if I pass in a string with one character again is asset false if I do a string with two characters the result should be true because a b first two characters are the same as the last two characters so now let's uh, say a a a that should be true because the first two and the last two are the same so let's say a b c a a b whichever assert this should be assert false because the first two and the last two are not the same let's see if it's running fine that's good so that's how we make use of the assert true and the assert false methods and you can add more tests to this JUnit. One thing you should notice is actually we are writing multiple conditions in the same test which is not really considered a good practice. We'll look at a few more JUnits at a later point in time where we really follow the uh, good practices of JUnit. In this particular tutorial I'm uh, uh, focusing on giving you a lot of idea on In this tutorial, let's concentrate on learning the JNIT framework and we'll have a separate video where we'll focus on what is good and what is not good. Uh, one thing you, you would have already noticed is that this particular line of creating the string helper, we are doing it twice in each method. So, what we can do is use something called an add before. Add before is a annotation which makes the method run before every test. So, what happens when I put some an add before before a, a, a thing is let's say I am just uh, doing a sys out uh, before and I just put a sys out in even the, these two methods as well. I'll just put the test methods in there. This is just to show you the order of execution of the methods. So let's go ahead and do a sysout again here and test. Oops. 
copy the okay so uh, if i run the jnit test right now in addition to the jnit test results you would see the console you would see that the before runs before every test so whatever method that we wrote at add before annotation it actually runs before every test the similar thing similarly there is another annotation called add after this add after annotation actually runs after every test so if we look at the output right now oops sorry i have to rename the method let's go ahead and do that Run the JNIT test right now. Oops. Okay, that's better. So, okay, I've printed before here as well. So, let's go ahead and change that and run the JNIT test. So, if you look at it right now, it says before, test, after. Before, test, after. So, basically, the thing is this before annotation and the after annotation are run before and after the tests so after if i have five tests in the method the order of execution would be before first test after before second test after before third test after so that's about the before and the after methods the other class other annotations which are present are the before class and the after class annotations so let's go ahead and do. So if I run something before class, the most important thing is public static. So it's actually a class level thing. So if I say something is before class, uh, then it's run only once per, for that particular test. So if If you look at it right now, so before class, all the tests are run and then after class method is run. So before class and after class methods are run once for every test class. Uh, however, the before and after methods when we looked at them earlier, actually before and after methods were run along with every test. So before was run first, first test after, before, second test after. But before class and after class are just run once. So it's before class, test 1, test 2 and all the other tests in your class and then at the end after class. Uh, this before and after and before class and after class are used to set up what you call fixture. Here the only setup that we would need actually to do the test is the uh, set, creating of the helper class. So okay. Uh, let's look at how to use the before and the after now. I'll just move back to before and remove this and actually remove the after and actually it shouldn't be static void anymore. So it's and I'll remove this also. So now I have a before method and the after method. Before method and the after method can also be used to set up the uh, starting state of a test. So if let's say I have a common state that I need in all the tests here for example uh, creating the helper is something which almost every test would need here so I can do that in common and do something of this kind so now helper is equal to string helper I don't need to create now the helper in every test I'll also remove the system.outs not needed anymore okay so now I have this and the after I can actually set helper to null, not really needed, but let's go ahead and run the test. So in this video we looked at asset false, asset true, after, before, after class and before class. We are creating more videos as we speak and if you want to stay updated, don't forget to click the subscribe button. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and feel free to share this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time.